A quick hello and we're good to go. Welcome to the show, Stefan Spencer. Welcome. Thank you, Jason. Oh, that was lovely. <laughs> oh, I like I like your deep voice, and you've got the the technique with the microphone. That was that was wonderful. Welcome. I see you've got a lot of books behind you, most of which you wrote. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> three of which I either wrote or co-wrote, and the rest are not mine. They belong to the Airbnb owner. <laughs> so, oh, right. You're in an Airbnb. Why is that? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're we're here in Tel Aviv uh, visiting my wife's family, and we've oh, been brilliant. here since July. Hang on. You're on holiday. Oh, since July. Sorry. I, I, I was a bit slow to say that. I was going to say, you know, you've actually brought your microphone, and you've got this amazing sound, and you've got your three books so you can put up behind you. Those are the three books for anybody watching, and I've I've seen them all on Google. I, they've all got their knowledge panels, which is why I'm kind of terribly excited. Right, Stefan, welcome. We start off with the, in fact, brand serps, and your brand serps really cool. I like your brand serp a lot. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> There's a new way to to kind of uh, compliment people. You've got a lovely knowledge panel. Uh, if we can show the knowledge panel on the right hand side, you've got a really nice uh, description of who you are, what you do, and the books you wrote. Anton, we miss. Ah, oh, there you go. Uh, photo from PubCon makes you look uh, incredibly impressive, and your chosen photo—that's actually the photo from your homepage on the right. Google's really got what you, how you want to be presented, and who you are. The author underneath is a good description. It knows what site stephanspencer.com, uh, Wikipedia, obviously, education, so on and so forth, and the four books. You've only written three, but two of those must be versions of the same thing, the art of the SEO. That's correct. Right. And on the right-hand side, you've got a special place in my heart because you're a human being person who has rich site links with About in the Podcasts, which shows how much Google thinks your podcasts are important to your audience alongside who you are, the About part, and that, that, that homepage. Um, so... Congratulations on having rich site links for your personal name. I still haven't got mine and I'm frustrated now. Uh, and below that, you've got your Twitter boxes. And I noticed it looks incredibly well organized. And I actually ran through your Twitter feed and you very rarely have any tweets with images that are not formatted exactly like that. Is that a system or is it just luck? That is a system. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And what, 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 if we can take the screen away, you can now tell us why you have that system. I want to be able to not have to worry about my Twitter and just mm -hmm. leave it to my team to run it for me without my involvement. And that's exactly Genius. what they do. Brilliant. I thought it was you. I'm, I'm a complete, I'm very naive. But what, what, what is really nice about it is it actually when you go through it, it is very standardized, but in a really nice, pretty way. Uh, there, and there is variation. But what it does mean is that on your brand SERP, it looks incredibly neat and tidy and professional. And so your brand SERP looks very, very professional. And if we can have the next screen, I actually realized that you're one of the only guests I've had on this show that I haven't been tracking. Um, obviously, the show is all an entity-based content uh, experiment that we're doing with WordLift. So I've been tracking all the guests, and I've forgotten you. So I do apologize. And this is how it looks or how you look, or your brand SERP looks on the CaliCube tool with enormous amounts of control, uh, pretty good quality. Um, and in fact, it looks like that around the world. So you've also managed to nail it so that Google understands who you are, what you do, and present you in the same way all around the world, which is brilliant. Nice. So just that was all one big kind of loving on Stefan's uh, brand SERP. So Thank you very I'm much. The love. <laughs> <laughs> You've made me a happy man. Uh, and the last slide is just to say this is actually the last show of 2020. Uh, initially, this CaliCube Tuesdays thing was a way to keep the podcast going while I couldn't travel, and I was going to do eight or nine, then start traveling again. Obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, and it occurred to me that there's been a lot of great guests, and there's a really nice design. And I thought I'd make this poster that I shared just before the show started. Uh, so go on to Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn and have a look at that because it's groovy and share it. And I think that's a really nice, I, I like to look at that as this kind of team. We're a club, aren't we, Stefan? Yep. Brilliant. Some really awesome people in there and uh, many of whom I have interviewed for my show, Marketing Speak. Right. Oh, yeah. So it's all, it all kind of turns around and around. 
But today we're not talking about podcasting. We're talking about how to find and hire the right SEO. And you have a seven-step process that includes riddles. So can we start? <laughs> that does. Well, I'm, I'm just tickled by the idea that you're asking people riddles to, you know, if if you want to oh, be hired, so much fun. In. Riddles, trick questions, brown M and M's. There's so many things. <laughs> oh right, brown M and M's. Oh, can we come to that later? Can you start by telling me? Uh, I mean, I, I'm looking at this from an SEO's point of view. I get hired, so you're the person who would usually be talking to me and trying to trick me with the, the riddles. So can we start and go through the process so that next time I'm in front of a potential client, I know where they're gonna trick me up? <laughs> okay, so there's the interview process where uh, I might have trick questions. I might include a riddle there, but probably I've included the riddle earlier in the process where I'm just screening. So the first step in the process is a screening step where I get the garden to weed itself and it's done with the job posting. So uh, many job postings out there have some sort of little trick and uh, very thoroughly, you'll miss it. It'll say something like, be sure to put in the subject line unicorn or whatever it is, right? And if they don't, the email gets deleted. The inquiry just doesn't, uh, doesn't get through. So that's oh, yeah. a very simple way of doing it, but I like to take it a little step further and ask people to, who are applying for a job to answer a problem solving riddle. So that, that could so be I, I like a, where they're applying. Correct. So that's part of the, the reply process. Now you might want to, instead of including a riddle, say, you have to leave me a voicemail instead of send an email. And that way you get to hear their voice, you get to hear how kind of um, well kept they are on uh, on audio. Whereas if it's just an email, it could be anybody who wrote that email. It could be the person's brother or sister who helped out and doesn't have any typos or whatever. Uh, it just makes me cringe whenever I see cover letters that have typos in them. Like, no, yeah. <laughs> how could you miss that easy step? Uh, but anyway, so I want to see attention to detail. I want to say follow directions. And even if they quote unquote cheat on this part of it, let's say they Google the answer and they just paste that in. I'm yeah. actually okay with that because this isn't a, a job where you have to uh, start from scratch, not knowing anything and figuring it all out on your own. No, you could take courses. You could read books like this one, the <laughs> art of SEO. And then you'll become an expert without Brilliant having point. to figure it all out on your, on your own. Right. So you can right, stand yeah. on the shoulders of giants. No, that, that's really interesting because I mean, I'm, uh, with the, the CaliCube tool that I just showed you, I'm actually building that out to become uh, a tool whereby you look at your brand SERP and it provides you with advice about what you can do to improve it, including your knowledge panel. And one of the things I was looking to do is, is get a team involved in it um, and somebody to look after my social media like you. And I actually asked Bibby, the link builder, um, mm -hmm. for some advice. And she gave me similar advice. She actually has a YouTube video, and I've now done that, where they have to watch it right through to the end. So they know who I am. And at the end, it says, here's where you need to apply. And it, it certainly sorts the wood from the chaff yeah. because hardly anybody gets that far. Yeah. It's, Brilliant. It's Point so, number one. Simple. It's amazing. And, yeah. and that's the thing. Yeah. And so where the I, brown M&Ms come, come in is because David Lee Roth from uh, Van Halen famously had a no brown M&Ms clause in his contracts. So if you had him perform at your stadium back in the day, he would have that in the contract. And if uh, that wasn't adhered to, if he goes into his uh, changing room and he sees that there's uh, M&Ms, but there are brown ones in there, then he would know he has to go check the lighting and check everything else because if they missed that, they probably missed other things. And he had a lot of really important um, uh, criteria in his contract. And if they weren't met properly, his life could be on the line. Right. Okay. 
Yep. Yeah. Okay, very dangerous playing those very fast licks if you're Eddie Van Halen. Um, I mean, I don't know <laughs> well, much about that. Drop from stage or have lights flying in or, or, or fireworks going off or whatever, and you don't want to catch fire. <laughs> so. so what's your equivalent in, in hiring an SEO then? My equivalent is the the uh, either voicemail, oh, right, the okay. riddle, or some other little step that if they miss it, then I know that, oh, I, I can't really trust any of this, that they're going to maybe cut other corners or right. they're not necessarily going to be a good fit for me. Okay. I was looking for somebody putting your life on the line by forgetting something, but um... not my business on the line. Yeah. Oh, that's by a pretty making good point. a mistake. Right. So they might uh, end links to hit a quota and then my site gets penalized because they didn't tell me that they were going to do that. And I would have said, oh, no, you're not going to do that. I'd rather you right. miss the, the quota that you committed to than, than pay for links. So this is the sort of thing where I, I want to operate on a purely white hat level for myself, for my clients. And cool. if somebody is going to cut any corners, that's definitely not a fit. Brilliant. Okay. Well, actually, this is going to turn out to be really useful for me because I'm planning on hiring some SEOs next year. So uh, point number two, then, after, after they found the brown m and oh, no, thrown out the brown m and <laughs> That's right. You can take them home and eat them later. Okay. So you request their social media profiles. Oh, right. You don't have to get all of them, but they need to at least give you one of them. And it doesn't even have to be a personal one. It could be a... a uh, a, a brand one, a company one, but I want to be able to see what they're posting. Mm -hmm. Ideally, if I can see on a personal account, like a Facebook or Twitter, see, here's where it gets really interesting because I can go back in time. It's like a time machine. They're not going to be able to fake what they posted on Twitter two or three years ago. Right. They could right. clean up their act and get really uh, uh, white hat or uh, thoughtful or, or thought provoking in the last few weeks while they're job hunting. But what happened a year ago, two years ago, three years ago? So I want to go back in time onto their uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. So that's right. and really you would helpful. go back three, three years. That, that's a lot of research. Me, no. My team, yes. <laughs> They're going to do all that work who, who for me. Who already knows how to take out the brown M&Ms. Somebody you already trust, yeah. you get them to go through it and say, is that person going to fit in with the team? Can I ask you a personal question? How big is your team? Yeah, I have seven people. All right, okay. So yeah. it's a manageable number, and adding a new person is obviously kind of, relatively speaking, quite a major uh, step. Yeah, e each... Hire is critically important because it helps set the, the the culture for the entire team. And if I make a wrong hire, then not only does that potentially ruin the culture, but it's can be it can be very expensive and and painful to extract that person out of the organization. Right. Okay. So that's step two. Step three. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, with the social media profiles, you're not trying to find stuff that's embarrassing or whatever. You're just looking for stuff that uh, conveys that they aren't who they say they are or that they're somehow operating in an incongruent or in mm. a, inauthentic way. And uh, that's really important to me. I, I believe that honesty is is, is critically important. And and. Sure being vulnerable, being authentic, being congruent. This is all part of the company values and my values, and, and thus it needs to be front and center for whoever I bring on board. Super. So, yeah, right, no, brilliant. So we've, t we've weeded out the, the, the chaff, um, and I, I like that because I never really thought about it. I always thought that's that step one. I always kind of thought I'd like to try giving everybody a chance, but that's my tendency in life. I tend to assume everyone's lovely until they prove otherwise. And my daughter famously um, like uh, imagines everyone's horrible until they prove themselves to be lovely. So that makes a, a well, really everybody nice. Everybody is lovely. Everybody is lovely. It's just that not everybody's a fit. So I I Ooh, know everyone that... has light in them. Everyone regardless of what your per political persuasion is or whatever, 
you might just hate the person who is currently running your government. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's okay. You can do and say and think whatever you want. You're uh, in, entitled to your opinions. But if you give somebody the benefit of a doubt and you know that there's light in everybody, you're going to see that light when other people don't. And you're going to kind of hold that person to a higher standard and they're going to hold themselves to a higher standard. Right. Okay. Br wonderful. Lovely, lovely thought. The, the idea of coming through that first stage and saying, right, okay, we, we've sorted out the people who actually pay attention and actually look at the details to get through that first step into the second step, check that they're not presenting a, a, a false or, or pretend image to you. And you can go back quite a long way with social media. Step three then? Yeah. Well, step three actually doesn't have to happen uh, after steps one and two, it's going to be throughout the process. And that is A-B split testing your job ads. Instead what? of just posting the same job ad everywhere, why not test things and see what performs better? For example, I figured out that using the term wicked smart in the job headline pulled really well in the city of Boston. Oh. Now I would post to the or my team i should say would post to craigslist and indeed.com and and various other uh, job boards but when we were posting to city specific job boards like craigslist boston we found that wicked smart pulled down some really uh high quality candidates versus uh, just a term like geeky which might do well in another city but wicked you know as a term that is very popular in boston so that is something that you you might only find out by running some tests and sure. seeing for example if a riddle works better than putting a requirement of of a certain word in the subject line or some other uh, criterion that tests uh, their attention to detail some might pull better than others in how would you know unless you A-B split test those? Right. Okay. Brilliant stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if this is going to be one of the steps coming up because we haven't actually cheated. I don't know what the set, seven steps are ahead of time. Um, but <laughs> we, we were talking about kind of qualifications. When I say to somebody uh, about SEO, you know, how comfortable do you feel with SEO? How much do you know? I mean, that's obviously an idiotic question. But people will tend to come out and imagine they know perhaps much more than they really do. And somebody will apply for a job and say, I'm a really genius SEO. I will be a perfect fit for your company. Um, is, I mean, is there any way to kind of sort the wood from the chaff there? Oh, totally. And oh, that's where you. step four comes in, which <laughs> involves- <laughs> We didn't this, cheat. We didn't cheat. I love this. It's the first interview and making sure that you get only qualified candidates. So I use trick questions in the first interview, but I also will ask probing specific questions. So mm. if you get more specific with the question and you request a very specific answer, you're going to get a higher quality answer. And mm. whether they uh, kind of flub that or fib their way through it, it's a lot easier to tell if you're getting specific with them rather than talking in generality. So, uh, what's your favorite aspect of SEO is still very general. Brand what set. are your favorite SEO, F SEO tool? Very general still. But once you start digging into the details, like for example, I did ask uh, in an interview uh, on behalf of a client, uh, I was interviewing a potential head of uh, SEO for this, this client. And I asked about their favorite SEO tool and, and the guy answered, Majestic SEO. I already knew something was up because Majestic rebranded as Majestic from Majestic SEO years prior. So I knew to ask a follow-up question and I got very specific. I asked them about what is that metric that is um, in, in Majestic that is really important? And I just waited for the guy to answer and I knew he would mess it up because as I said, I, 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 my spidey sense was tingling once I heard the word majestic SEO. But it, so he, is, isn't, isn't that just part as well? You, you've got the spidey sense. Not all of us necessarily do. Right. But the client uh, got through the first two interviews uh, with this guy uh, thinking he, he's the one. 
And so they brought me in to do the, the, the final interview. If you use trick questions that are already pre-prepared, then y- you could just not know anything about yeah. SEO and ask a question and find out if this person is full of hot air or not. So I didn't need to consult my cheat sheet of trick questions. I just was genuinely curious to hear uh, yeah. about this guy's experience and uh, different tools that he used and and, and different um uh, uh, wins and and, and sure. losses or, or lessons that he learned. Well, what, what what I'm hearing there is is kind of like the idea that you know you you feel it and you need you as an interviewer need to be able to ad lib or or or, or improvise a jazz solo. I'm going to go music now. So you yeah. are now Spider Man who improvises jazz during interviews. That's I am, personally, but you don't have to be because that might sound intimidating to somebody who's not an SEO expert. And, and for them to know that, hey, just consult this cheat sheet and pick some trick questions from that cheat sheet, work them into the interview process, and you will know for sure if this person is snowing you or not. That relieves a lot of the stress and the pressure that they might have about making the right hire when they don't know SEO inside right. and out. And they're going to be interviewing somebody who definitely would know more about SEO than they do. Well, sure, brilliant. And there was a, a question that just, just popped up, which is actually a question that did occur to me earlier on, then I realized what the answer is. You've employed seven people, but in fact, you help other companies employ SEOs. So you've actually employed, as it were, hundreds, probably. Hundreds and hundreds, because hundreds I have been, thousands. Can we say hundreds and thousands? No, hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> because just within my company, uh, since 1995, well, I've got, you know, this is my second iteration of, or actually got three companies that I've founded over the years. So 1995, I founded Net Concepts and uh, sold it to Kavaria in 2010. During those 15 years, I hired easily 100 people. Yeah, okay. because, uh, yeah, we had teams in the US, in uh, New Zealand. I didn't get get involved in hiring uh, the team, any of the team in China, but um, I was involved in hiring, uh, you know, all, all the important hiring decisions I was involved in. I might not have led it because uh, I found that it was best if I um, delegate uh, as much as possible so that I could stay in the in in the kind of visionary position and focus on. Uh, on speaking and, and writing and um, uh, bringing in right. uh, big deals and so forth. So, and and so, th- sorry, if we can come back to the comic book hero theme that I was kind of warming to, even though I don't know anything about it. Uh, uh-huh. The Riddler, isn't he one of the Batman villains? And yep. so, instead of being Spider Man with the jazz solo, you can now be uh, the Riddler. Uh, <laughs> what, what are the riddles that you, you come up with during these interviews? Go on, give me a riddle and I'm going to get it wrong. Okay, so the riddle, remember, isn't in the interview process. Oh, isn't it? Oh, sorry. The riddle is in the job advert. So I've already got it wrong. I'm already three steps too late. (laughs) Yeah, so the trick questions are in the interview process. Trick Uh, questions. All right, we'll call them riddles for the moment because it makes me happy. Oh, okay. (laughs) We'll we'll come back to an actual riddle that I used in in a job advert. or that, that I do use in job adverts. In, in oh, just okay. But for now, we'll talk about trick questions. Oh, by the way, if you were curious what the uh, the metric was from Majestic that the guy answered with, it was oh. AC rank. And that was deprecated years prior to when uh, I interviewed this guy. So he was several years out of date saying that this was his favorite SEO tool and right. not, not even knowing that it was trust flow and citation flow that w- uh, those were the two r- right answers. There wasn't a single metric AC rank that existed uh, at that point in time. It had been, been dec- deprecated at least two years prior. So h- here are a few trick questions. Oh, um, I'm, I'm starting to get frightened now. I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to... It's I'm super gonna... easy. It's super I'm totally easy. Good. Phew. Okay. What's your process for optimizing meta keywords? No, I don't. Exactly. I don't oh, oh, brilliant. I got one right. Can I have the job? Yeah, no, not yet. Oh. Uh, but <laughs> the the common answer you'll probably get is meta keywords 
don't matter as much as they used to, or, uh, you know, they might answer it with a, uh, mm. a, a another question, but what you want to get to is that meta keywords never counted in Google. They were never a positive ranking signal, not even on day one. So that is something that you could know by reading that cheat sheet beforehand. I actually have it on my website. It's called it's it's called the SEO BS detector. It's in right. it's in the learning center. And the website, website is stephanspencer.com. I'll I'll do yeah. the plug there for you. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. So you can just read that uh, cheat sheet. It's really short. There are like seven or so, uh, trick questions on there and just slip them into the interview process. And you'll know there's only one right answer because I've structured the question so that there is only one right answer. There is no process for optimizing never meta keywords. And there never was because meta keywords never were of any value to Google. So next question, what's a good keyword density to aim for? I don't aim for big keyword density because it's all about the entities. Dave Davis from last week, we had a great chat about, well, it wasn't about entities, but it was partially, but I'm, I'm, I'm word lift as well. I mean, that whole, the, 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 the importance of entities is something I'm really overexcited about. Um, and you were talking about NLP, but not the same NLP that we were talking <laughs> yeah. about. And I'm getting confused. I think my brain's just frozen. No, but yeah, no. So, sorry, you're, go ahead. You're, what, what? you're totally on it. So the idea of sticking a keyword in Hang on, can, can I just ask a really quick question times. and you're allowed Ridiculous. to say yes. If okay. I answered that as a candidate, you would think, I, in French, we say he's farting above his head. He thinks he's much better than he really is and you wouldn't employ me. Well, I'm not going to uh, make any judgments uh, in, initially, I'm unless the person outright lies to me. Oh, right. Then, okay. Then, then they're out. But if I'm going to withhold judgment and I'm going to give them a benefit of a doubt, and in fact, if I'm starting to form an opinion, I'm going to ask for contrary evidence. This is really, really important for any um, interview that you ever do in the future, is if you're starting to form an opinion about somebody, oh, this person sounds like a renegade, or this person sounds like just a yes man or yes woman, or this person sounds like they might kind of operate like shoot from the hip kind of uh you know, yeah yeah do, uh, do things too uh loosey-goosey yeah you don't want to employ clint eastwood but that you might know. be a misperception so oh, i need yeah. to ask for contrary evidence so tell me about a time where you uh kind of followed the blueprint to the letter like followed a uh, standard operating procedure and got an incredible result without like going off on any different tangents. And if they can oh. answer that well, like, oh yeah, there was this huge project and I didn't deviate at all from it. And I got exactly the outcome the client was looking for, or the employer was looking for I'm like, oh, perfect. Okay. I, 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 I would know to uh, check my assumptions or my opinions mm -hmm. uh, because I like a lot that. of things and, and that we make, uh, like we, we make kind of judgment calls yeah. or, 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 or uh, decisions that are without the, the proper information. Without, no, no, 100%. Without, I mean, so somebody kind of says something, you think, oh, they're shooting from the hip. So you kind of think everything they ever do is going to be like that. And that's obviously terribly dangerous, but we do it as human beings. I think it's kind of inbuilt and it, it, we actually have to take a step back. And if it's the other way around, if somebody looks like they only ever follow procedure, and you think, well, they've got no imagination. That isn't necessarily true. They might be a brilliant improvisational jazz guitarist, for example. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, exactly. wonderful. So um, do you do online? He's going to have to now, isn't he? Hey, do, do you do online interviews now? I mean, you must do. Yeah, of course. And, and but, in fact, I only do online interviews because I, I hire it's 1995 on the on the on the dial-up modem. <laughs> well, back then, until I sold my agency in 2010, uh, at that point, I had uh, really only in, in, uh, physical offices. And right. uh, after that, I decided uh, I'm, I'm going fully remote. I oh, want to yeah. be able to be anywhere in the world and I want my team to be anywhere in the world. And I want to be able to hire the best people, regardless of whether they're in my city or not. And it's worked Wonderful. out really well. And I think that's the future. It's not getting people into a physical yeah. office in, in, in a cubicle farm uh, mm -hmm. and 
No, I I'm, I'm, I'm now in in, in uh, like in a uh, in a meeting room for hours at a time. I mean, that's just not that's that's 1990s sort of stuff that doesn't fit this uh but I mean, this new millennium no no 100 I mean, but way back in 1999 people were saying you can do the you can you can work on the internet from anywhere you can have remote teams you can wander around the world and hardly anybody was doing it um and i actually wish i'd talk to you at that point because i moved to mauritius in the indian ocean thinking this will be groovy i'll be on the other side of the world and in fact uh, it was quite difficult but i did actually have a, a team in mauritius and i went through a my my process for for employing people and finding great SEOs wasn't anything like this. So I'm going to write all this down because I need it. Number six. What's step number six? Okay. Uh, well, it's actually number five, and it's oh. ask specific questions that can prove expertise. And uh, remember, I said get specific. The better you get, the the better the outcome. Yep. Right. So if you can. Uh, maybe do a little research, even if you're not an SEO. Mm -hmm. Talk to people who are SEOs and ask them questions about not just tools like I gave that example of uh, Majestic, but ask them about things that have happened uh, in recent times. Like what were some of the implications of the most recent uh, Google Core update? When was that update? Uh, what, how do I know who some of the winners and losers were from that update? Like those sorts of questions. If you don't know that um, Search Metrics puts out a winners and losers uh, report oh, I, every I time that say, there's a big I was going to say update. Lily Ray because she did a great article about that. Yeah, that's she another great a, answer. An awesome, awesome article about that. And the other one is is what were the implications and and. Um, what uh, what were the implications of it? I would say read the article by Glenn Gabe, mm -hmm. which yeah. means I'm paying attention. Exactly. Brilliant. You don't need I to know play. everything that Glenn Gabe said, but to know that he posted something and that he is legit. And most of these big updates, like he he's a go-to source for that. So, I mean, actually, people having legit uh, references is a really, really good Pointer. I mean, if somebody starts saying, well, I was reading an article by Bill Slowski, for example, then you would know that they were at least paying attention to the patents. Or um, Kevin Indig did an update. I'm sorry, I'm showing off now. I've been reading them all. Kevin <laughs> Indig did a, a three-part update, if I remember You're just right. name-dropping. <laughs> <laughs> Go shamelessly, shamelessly. Um, right, okay, so is that step five finished? Yeah, that's step five. What's step six? I'm, I, I've got uh, Anton who's putting the numbers up on the screen so I don't lose count again. Okay, so if you want to make sure that this is a really good hire, bring in a second interview uh, expert. So the person who is going to do that second interview, just like my client brought me in to interview this guy uh, and, and others after him. Um, many of my clients actually have asked me to come in and do second interviews because they want to make sure that they're hiring the right person. So you might not, uh, think that you know you you need to bring in uh, somebody to do that second interview, but if you do, you're going to get a better outcome. If you bring in somebody who's, um, let's say, very talented at interviewing, bringing out the um, uh, the person's uh, values and uh, their prejudices and, and, uh, predispositions and, um, yeah, you can, you can also get some of this information by doing personality assessments. Right. I, okay. I do a lot of personality assessments for uh, team members. It's another thing that it's not part of my seven step process, but, um, I do, I do recommend it. So e cool. either, uh, disc or strengths finder or predictive index or uh, Colby K O L B E or a combination of the above, uh, I think is uh, going to be very, very helpful. Right. Okay. So I, I'm actually going to come back a tiny step uh, is that you were saying that your clients often bring you in for that secondary interview to make sure they made the right decision. Do you have somebody on your team that you bring in for a secondary interview for people you're going to employ? Or do you get somebody from outside? Um, I have somebody on my team that does the first interview. So I'm the person doing the second interview. 
I asked it the wrong way around. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, brilliant. That's step six, get a second opinion. That's a bit like going to the doctor, isn't it? And seven. <laughs> yeah. Confirm the fit by having a trial period or a trial project. All right. Yeah. How long is the period? A month? A week? Ideally, the longer, the better. Mm -hmm. I ask for 90 days. If they balk Ooh. at that, then I might knock it down to 60 or if they really balk to that to 30 but having a week is not enough i mean they're they're just getting their feet wet they're just getting acclimated well after I mean, two weeks or three weeks so to to expect yeah. an outcome from them that's enough that you can uh um judge their their quality of uh, and fit is that's that's a big ask but i mean in any kind of employment situation i mean 30 days is fairly typical i mean just integrating into the team is 30 days and with anything you're going to do in seo anything to do with google actually getting the results and actually getting them involved with the team to actually start doing things productively and seeing any kind of result is going to be at least 90 days yeah brilliant stuff right so can, that's the seven step process and what we can do is end 2020. And that was brilliant, by the way. I'm going to steal all those ideas now for 2021. And we can finish 2020 with the, one of your riddles. Give me one of your riddles. <laughs> okay, fine. All right. Now, you can find variations on this uh, online. and Or you could just change some of the, the characters, like with animals or whatever, and, and have something that's not quite as easily Googleable. But here you go. Well, okay. A mother, a father, two girls, two boys, a policeman, and a convict are to cross the river with a boat. Oh, the God. conditions are the convict cannot be alone with any member of the family without the policeman. The father cannot be with the daughters if the mother is not there. The mother cannot be with the boys if the father is not there. Only the father, the mother, and the policeman know how to sail the boat. So one of them should be on the boat on each crossing and the boat holds at most two people. There you go. So this was already modified. So it's not as easily Googleable. Like there's uh, a policeman, a convict and uh, a chicken. A, a, oh no, it's, it's, it's <laughs> boxes and chicken. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> or a chicken or a child <laughs> that need to cross the river on a boat and the boat only holds two people. Get, right. get them all safely across without leaving the convict alone or uh with the child right. uh without the policeman you know that's that's the easy one that's already out there everywhere online but this is a variation where by now i'm sure it's uh the answer is online too but even so as i said if the, if the person didn't do the work themselves to solve it but they found an answer online that that still counts because they're really good at using Google then. So that's fine. Yeah, which is a, a wonderful, wonderful way to end it. Thank you very much, Stefan. That was an absolutely brilliant interview. I've learned loads and you've probably saved my 2021 all on your own. No, you and Bibby, Bibby the link builder, uh, who gave me the first uh, how, to, how to hire an SEO pet talk a week ago. You give me a second one. I've got the best system in the world, thanks to you and her. So. Thank you, everybody, for joining us in 2020. It was an absolutely amazing year. I'm really, really pleased. And if we can show that poster again, um, I'm really, I'm, I'm really in, impressed with the guests, really happy with everything they shared. Uh, every single interview was an absolute pleasure. And I love the colorful design of the, the, the poster. Thank you to Anton behind the scenes, who's been flashing these things up on the screen uh, for six months. Thank you for Rui, who's been doing some great promotion over the last few weeks. Um, Thank you to everyone for watching and see you in 2021. A quick goodbye to end the year. Thank you, Stefan. And thank you as well, Jason. <laughs> I was going to list every single guest, but that would have been 35 names and the song would have been much too long. <laughs>